Hello, I'm Sean Arnold, a special educator and STEM coach in New York City's District 75. As part of this Apple teacher training, we're gonna cover GarageBand for Mac and iPad. Music tells meaningful stories and enriches our lives. Understanding rhythm, melody, and harmony, it, it gives students the building blocks to make music of their own. GarageBand helps students learn to create and sample beats, arrange tracks, record vocals, capture sound, and, and mix their audio. But that's just the technical skills. GarageBand is a free and powerful recording studio that opens up more ways to convey themes and ideas in student storytelling and ways for you to engage your listeners. You can create songs to reinforce vocabulary, record enhanced poetry verses, or read to improve fluency. You can connect time and rhythm to fractions or study sound waves. You can build a soundscape for various biomes or interview an astronaut or even recreate a historic moment. There are a number of ways to use it. Getting started just requires opening the app. GarageBand comes with an array of templates to help you get started creating a new project fairly quickly. Keep in mind though that while most projects on an iPad will transfer over to the Mac, the alternate is not always true. On the Mac, just choose the template you want. On the iPad, you can find your projects in the My Songs browser. Now from there, you can create a new document or open an existing song to edit it. This is also where later we'll show you how to share or duplicate your work by choosing Select in the top right. After you create a new project, you can browse touch instruments and explore hundreds of the fun ways an iPad will let you evoke different time periods or moods or cultures, but we'll dive into those sorts of things later. Audio Recorder makes it easy to create recordings of your voice or any other sounds that are around you. On a Mac, you can simply choose the track type and make sure you select Audio Track. Then make sure that you have the right microphone set up. You can adjust that in your GarageBand preferences. But after that, just click Create to open a new project containing that one microphone track. I highly recommend that you clean up and simplify your workspace, maybe by closing the library or turning off the metronome. Now on the iPad, you can open the audio recorder. In the sound browser, simply switch to the audio recorder and tap voice. Then you can choose any sound preset that you like. You can tap studio and then the microphone in the middle. I also recommend cleaning it up by turning off the metronome and then you can turn on automatic recording length. Simply tap the song section button, tap section A, and then turn on automatic. Now on both platforms, you're suddenly ready to record your voice. Simply tap the record button, the red one, and when you're done, click it again to stop. Then all you gotta do is hit play to listen to your recording. On an iPad, if you want, you can switch to the tracks view to see where it lines up. Apple Loops are short recording snippets of instruments or sound effects. They work pretty much the same across both platforms. Just go ahead and open the Loops browser and then click on any loop to preview it. You can find loops using keywords or just tap instruments or genres or descriptors to find whatever it is you're looking for. On an iPad, you can even do those same things in the Live Loops area. More on that later. Now you can even mark loops as your favorites so you can easily find them later. Then when you're ready, just add a loop to the project. Drag it in from that loop browser to an empty part of the tracks in your project. And then that loop can even become a new region in a new track as well. Then you can trim or move it as you need to, and then extend it to whatever level you want. Even loop that loop. You can use the sampler on an iPad to record virtually any sound and play it back as a melody on the sampler keyboard. Then you can use those as sound effects or background noises. Simply create a new track in the existing project and tap the Add Track button. Swipe to keyboard and tap the sampler button. Then you can go ahead and create a new sound sample. Simply position the microphone near the source of the sound you want to sample. Then you can trim your sample. Just drag those handles on the left or right to trim it so you just get the part you want. And then you can play that sound on your sample keyboard. The pitch of the sampled sound goes up or down as obviously you change the note. Then you can add that sample to your project. Simply tap the record button and record as you would any other sound. When you record anything, a graphical representation of your recording called a region appears in one of the tracks. And then you can trim or split or arrange any of those. That's what editing is. So you can move an audio region simply by dragging it, but be careful where it comes in contact with other regions as the overlapping portion might automatically be cut. Then you can go ahead and trim a region. Simply select it and drag the lower left or lower right edge of the region to shorten or lengthen it. 
Now, you can zoom in for some accuracy using the horizontal zoom slider in the upper right on a Mac, or by touching and holding a region handle on the iPad. You can copy and paste regions, simply select it and copy it. Or you can split a region, simply select it and then right click or double tap and choose split regions. And then you can also fully delete a region or adjust the volume of a single track. In the Mac version of GarageBand, you can get more control using automation, which allows you to easily add dynamics to your recordings. Simply open the automation controls. You can choose mix and then show automation. And then you can select the parameter you want to automate, like volume or panning. Then you can add automation points. Simply click anywhere in the track to reveal the curve and adjust accordingly. Then you can adjust those settings by dragging those automation points up or down or moving them back and forth. You can delete an automation point by double clicking it. And then go ahead and just listen to the results. Drummer really rocks by letting you add realistic beats to any audio project. And every virtual drummer in GarageBand has its own unique style. On both the Mac and iPad, you can simply try out a drummer, create a new empty project, and choose the drummer as the track you like. Then you can make that track longer simply by dragging the upper right edge of the track. You can audition different drummers. Simply click play to hear Kyle go. As he plays, simply select different beats from the list of beat presets and listen to how the drumming changes. You can edit that individual drummer's performance by dragging the yellow puck up or down in the XY pad to adjust their loudness or left or right to adjust the complexity. And you can even click on individual drum kit pieces to mute or unmute them and drag sliders for additional variations. And when you're done with that, simply pick a different drummer and see what other options are available. The iPad has virtual instruments itself like keyboards, guitar, bass, strings, and more. On a Mac, you can connect synthesizers and other devices or play through musical typing. Let's try on an iPad by opening the Smart Piano. In an existing project, just tap the Add Track button, swipe to the keyboard, and then tap Smart Piano. You can go ahead and play chords, you can turn autoplay to different numbers like one and then tap the C on the C chord strip and you can start here at playing different patterns without a great deal of musical complexity needed on your part. You can go ahead and record that touch instrument simply by tapping that record button and play that C and G note pattern back and forth. Go ahead and listen to your recording. Tap the play button. If you don't like how it goes, simply tap undo and try again. You can try a different keyboard sound, maybe try a that grand piano icon and choose a different keyboard like a classic rock organ or some smooth clav. Then you can play and record other touch instruments too to create a whole song. On the Mac, you can add a software instrument track. Simply click the add track button and choose a software instrument. Then click create. Use your Mac keyboard to play that instrument. Simply choose window and then show musical typing. The keyboard map in Musical Typing window shows which keys you can use to play different musical notes. You can make any adjustments you want, click record, and you know, I think it's worth the time to explore the sound library too. It's this trove of built-in sounds and instruments that you can use to create and record music in GarageBand, exploring all these different world instruments and figuring out how music of different cultures and time periods can come together iPads have a feature called Live Loops where you can play, edit, and arrange musical ideas in real time, kind of like a DJ. Simply open a new Live Loops project, create that project, tap Live Loops, and let's start with some electro funk. Now, you can play those different loops, simply tap one or more of the cells to play them. You can notice how each loop syncs in time with the other active loops. You can't make a mistake. Play an entire column of loops at the same time by tapping the trigger at the bottom. And then you can record a whole live loops performance simply by hitting that record button. Trigger a sequence throughout, make it really interesting. And then you can view the tracks you just recorded by tapping the tracks view button. From here you can continue to edit. Now we're ready to start mixing our recordings. GarageBand lets you adjust and add effects to your recorded tracks so they work together and complement one another. Mixing the tracks is sort of the final step before you export that audio and projects to share them with students, parents, or your coworkers. On both the Mac and iPad, you can simply open the track controls. Simply tap the track controls button, then tap an instrument thumbnail to see what adjustments can be made to that track. You can set the volume for each track. Simply in the track header, drag that volume slider left or right to lower or raise that volume level. Then you can adjust things like the balance from left and right speakers, adjust treble or bass, or change the track's tone. 
refine your mix using mute and solo so that you can hear certain tracks individually. And then on the Mac, you can open the Smart Controls panel, click the Smart Controls button in the control bar. Then you can add effects. On the iPad, you can affect the song similarly with the FX button. So it really isn't a song until we share it with others, either through collaborating or letting them listen to our finished product. So there's a lot of ways to do that. On both the Mac and iPad, you simply open the Songs browser, go ahead and rename your project to whatever you want it to be, and then you can just go to share your project. On the Mac, simply choose Share and then choose Song to Music. On the iPad, touch and hold the project thumbnail and tap Share. From there you can enter the song's information and then you can share it either as a project so that others can work along with you or as a finished song. And that was just the basics. Where you go from here is entirely up to you. To get you started though, let me show you a few examples of how you can use GarageBand in the classroom. Hmm, those are some good ideas. Oh, that one looks really interesting. Well, I'm excited to get started. Head to the Apple Teacher website to learn more. Take care.